Our lives are defined by the want to venture, to see what wonders lie in the outside world, to see what else we can find. And even when we find these wonders, we still keep venturing further and further out. But there are many wonders very close to us as well. Way closer than you could ever imagine them to be. So close that you only have to look out your window to see them. My garden is home to a myriad of different bird species that come and go as they please. The tiny blue tit, with its fast and nimble nature. The house sparrow, with its beautiful golden brown hues. The goldfinch, with its very colourful appearance. The jackdaw, large and bossy at the feeder. The pigeon, as grey and round as can be. The magpie, even more bossy than the jackdaw. And the starling, with its elegant gold and white tipped feathers, the focus of this documentary. Starlings are a passerine bird, a member of the family of starlings, Sternidae. They are a very social bird, and are usually never seen alone, flocking with multiple of their own species. They are also closely associated with humans, and can often be seen sitting or flocking near or on man-made structures, such as houses and other city buildings, such as schools, offices and shopping centres. Because of this, they are often seen feeding in residential gardens, feeding on the ground or on bird feeders put out by people. This also plays into where they nest. Often, starlings will nest in cavities of any sort that give them the proper protection. This can include the side of houses, holes in streetlights, old woodpecker holes, burrows, nesting boxes, and sometimes, although rarely, cliffs. The starlings, and by extension the other birds in my garden, mostly come from my local park near where I live. Most commonly, I see them along these long, straight lines of trees that line both the inner and the outer sections of the park. I often see them sat in trees on high branches, singing for a period before flying off elsewhere, possibly to my garden.
Yes, these birds certainly are interesting, but there is still a lot more to know about them. Starlings are quite small, with an average size of roughly 8 to 9 inches in length and a supporting wingspan of 31 to 44 centimeters. As they're quite small, they aren't very heavy either, with an average weight range of only 58 to 100 grams. While their most prominent feather feature is the golden white tips, if you look at their feathers closer, you will notice that they have an iridescent purple and green shine to them. The call of a starling is quite noisy and bright, a vibrant mix of various trills, squeaks and ticks. Have a listen. Starlings are also omnivorous birds, feeding on a very wide variety of different foods, from peanuts, sunflower hearts, suet, mixed seed, fruit, to mealworms, spiders, invertebrates, crane fly larvae, and earthworms. Starlings are a native bird here, found throughout all of the UK and Ireland apart from the highlands of Scotland. They are incredibly widespread across the globe as well, with their native population stretching all across Europe through countries like Sweden, Germany, Norway and France, and into some Asian countries like Far East Russia, India, Northern Mongolia and Kazakhstan. They have also been introduced to multiple countries, particularly the United States and Australia, where they are seen as pests to native birds and are often culled. In terms of population count, globally, there are thought to be around 310 million individual starlings in total. Here, that number is 1.8 million pairs, around 3.6 million in total across the UK. But starlings have a big problem. Their population is falling quite rapidly, especially over here. So rapidly, in fact, that since the 1970s, their population in the UK has fallen by over 50% of what it was. There are a few reasons this is the case. The first is pollution. A build-up of rubbish and chemicals that dissuades them from using their natural nesting sites, forcing them to seek out and use more human-made structures. Unfortunately, that isn't necessarily good for them either. Often, if a starling nests in the side of a house, people find these holes and seal them up, which forces them to try and find someone else to nest. Another reason is the increasingly hot summers. Because we and our wildlife aren't used to being bombarded by heat, this causes massive fluctuations in the starlings' food supply, making their natural food more scarce and difficult to come by. But perhaps the biggest reason for their population fall-off is the disruption of their food supply through the churning of soil. Much of a starling's food comes from the natural dirt on the ground.
soil disruption through various means such as intensive farming, landscaping and building kills many of the bugs that starlings feed on from the ground and rely on to survive through harsh winters and feed their young chicks with. This could be a potential reason as to why more and more starlings are found in cities nowadays. Because a lot of what they need, they now find here. And a lot of what they had in country areas is now simply not as useful to them. This is why I find it to be a good thing to give them and all the birds that live local to you a little bit of help. Just a little is enough. Even something as simple as a nesting box or two, or a standing feeder, can be useful to help nudge them along. Given the right food and nesting, your local birds can not only survive, but thrive as well. And maybe, just maybe, if enough of us help out, we'll start to see these birds making a comeback. I hope you enjoyed watching this documentary. And I also hope you learned something about the starlings that most likely reside in your garden. I'll see you on the next adventure. Goodbye for now.